that in here? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's very difficult to give support to Simon. I mean, his way, most of the Hello. time, his stuff is happening. Did you see the line about the cat in the article? And when he's home, he doesn't want it to be sort of there all the time by me giving him all my good advice. Mm. Oh, next they'll be asking me how the cats are coping with the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> the leadership issue, so far as Carol and I are concerned, it's strengthened a relationship. <laughs> Carol's okay. been at the coalface of it. But I've got some, um, I've got a camera looking straight down my uh, shoulder. What Simon's going through now is difficult for the family because it's so public. People will say, you know, what's it like? How's it going? So you just can't even really forget about it. Speculation about the Labor leadership has not abated. What's going on is that Mr Crean's predecessor has changed his mind. He used a provocative interview with the Bulletin to throw down the gauntlet. That I never mentioned the idea of a leadership challenge. I never said that my views had changed one bit. I showed him total respect and total loyalty and I expect the same in return. Those who are plotting against him are not telling him to his face. They're not fronting him. They want to talk to gallery journalists. They want to get their thoughts and our stories and nibble away at him. And there's nothing he can do and it is bizarre. Rumours in Canberra's Parliament House today are that his leadership will now be challenged in a matter of weeks. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my tennis days, so I try not to listen to the news or watch the news, but then you sort of have to because you want to know what's happening. Simon and I first met at the local tennis club. Simon's mother was running the juniors. Right now, there is a fear that something will happen, that Simon will lose eventually a challenge. It is what politics is about. It's probably the, the, the absolute crappy end of what it's about. I'm no longer smitten by the glamour of it. I've, you know, I've had my lunch with the Queen and you know, I've done this and that. So you've just got to it's go for broke, isn't it? Now I see you know, the whole story and what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You've got to play really aggressively. And, and how it plays out. and. And, you know, behind the, the beautiful buildings, there's a lot of, you know, grubby stuff, I suppose. There were two things that I didn't want Simon involved in, and that was uh, politics and football. And it's, as I say, it just shows you how much influence I had on him, you know. And Simon grew up in the political home. Frank Green was treasurer to Gough Whitlam, and he was deputy leader for a time. Dad, of course, always understood the importance of loyalty, always put the party ahead of himself, was disappointed in human nature. Betrayals, betrayals. Uh, in politics, it's, it's hard to define what is a betrayal, I suppose, and what is not. The relationship between Beasley and Crean is close, and it goes back a long way. It's very important. They were both senior ministers uh, in the previous Labor government. They're both sons of Whitlam ministers. Uh, there's a bloodline in there, if you like. My younger brother, David, the treasurer down in Tasmania, um, was left alone with Kim at um, one stage, and Kim bit his toe. <laughs> David howled. I got to know Kim closely during the 80s. He, of course, in the cabinet, me in the ACTU and with all of those accord negotiations. I was overseas with him on the occasion in which his marriage broke up and I had a number of heart to hearts with him. It's not just the relationship developed that develops because you're in politics but you become mates, you're, you're close. Kim has 
not spoken to Simon honestly. I don't think he's spoken to most of his colleagues honestly. He certainly hasn't lived up to what I thought the sort of person Kim was. I, I just think the way he's operated is, is not being honourable. But you don't have to be honourable to be a politician. It's just everyone thought he was. <laughs>
it's going to be really interesting because there's something is going to happen to Crane's leadership. You sh it's clear that there's going to be a challenge. And how I'm really fascinated by how that pans out because it could be incredibly um, vitriolic and bloody and fantastic for journalists. They're a very happy crowd, the caucus, because we're on a positive agenda and I'm going to keep them that way. We'd love to be there and I'm sure if the last few weeks and months has been anything we'll hear a lot about it. Labor's worried that if he's still there they're going to be wiped out. The caucus members, it's their jobs and they're getting towed. Excuse me, can the key cameras please leave the caucus now? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 John Howard may have harboured thoughts of retirement, but in the end, the pressure to stay on was simply too great. I think leadership is lonely, quite frankly, because you've got to make the decisions yourself. You can take all the advice, but in the end, it's your judgment. It seems Kim Beasley is forcing the issue, reportedly launching his challenge to... I just don't understand how you can say one thing and mean another and live with it. I can't relate to it. It's not me and I could never do it. Wayne Swan, Stephen Smith and Stephen Conroy pretending a meeting with Kim Beasley to discuss a leadership challenge. Simon would never mount a leadership challenge. He does not believe really that leadership challenges should happen. I think Simon has a, a very high moral view that if a leader is um, is not doing well, they're either voted out or, or they would come to a conclusion that they're not the right person for the job. Kim would be very torn inside uh, um, his own mind. He'd be getting competing pressures, uh, conflicting views. Um, he would be finding it pretty hard to uh, know what the right thing to do was. I think if you give loyalty, you get it in return. The people who'll never get loyalty are those that never give it. People are ambitious for themselves rather than, you know, the party the they cause. join parties mm. and get in and feel oh, that right. they can do something. Should have been outed and they've had to deny that um, they're challenging. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. <coughs> I'm glad I brought my children up differently. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, they should be a team and uh, not a lot of scraggy, struggling individuals, and uh, that's what seems to be happening. And I'm proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with Gough Whitlam in this great fight of his. Dad's involvement with politics had its ups and downs, particularly when he was sacked as treasurer in the Whitlam government. Mum was really angry. <laughs> she took no prisoners. <laughs> she was not allowed, uh, prepared to let anyone off the hook in terms of what she saw as the deceit and the undermining and the, uh, the backstabbing and the, the lack of loyalty. Frank was betrayed, but he would have seen it as part of the political game and he didn't really want to play it the way they were playing it. In a way, he he stepped back um, in a way that Simon won't step back. Once these things get momentum, it's almost impossible to stop them, which is why even though Kim Beasley doesn't have enough vo of the vote at the moment in the caucus to beat Simon Crean, you just can't help thinking that eventually he will. I have spoken to Simon um, yesterday prior to dinner and he said he was um, having to make some very serious decisions and um, he would ring me when <laughs> they were obvious and he hasn't rung yet so I'm a little bit unaware of what his final actions are going to be I suppose. I had a meeting with Kim. Someone had to establish whether he was actually going to run. And so I did. I had to initiate it. I've initiated all these discussions. And, you know, that's what's disappointing, I suppose. 
So how's it going then? How are you going? Um, you yeah, I'm doing I'm going at 10 o'clock to uh, announce that um, I'm calling it on. Do you want do you want me up there for support? Uh, give us a ring uh, after you've done this. Right, and if I'm um, if you don't come up, I'll come home probably sometime. Uh, well, I can't get on a plane up there at the moment. They're all booked out. You sound strong and confident. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very Dave. much. Thank you. Um, and we'll be home for the weekend. <laughs> Now, the line that's running on commercial radio, which is the line pushed by Con and Leo, is that Kim challenged you and you're responding. So it's, you, know, you can see where they're trying to go with the dynamics yeah. of it, that he's the one who's taken up the gauntlet to you, yeah. when in fact... It's anyway, the... I just say, well, look, if you want to accept their word or my word, go and check it with Faulkner. On your side, man. Good on you. Backed up against the wall. He will go out and fight and and try and change the situation. So it makes it makes him steelier. But to be steely, you've got to be focused. Second door, Simon. When people are focused, they tend to be very quiet and consumed by it. I suppose. I'm putting myself forward again for a renewed mandate as leader to take forward the agenda. I've begun to put out to the Australian electorate. Kim Beasley has formally announced his intention to challenge for the Labor leadership, saying he's the leader who can connect with the electorate. I know I can beat John Howard. I can connect with the Australian people. It's as simple as that. I'm focused on two things, Neil. One is getting over this little hurdle. I think it's, well, OK, well, no, it's a hurdle. The, the hurdle on the path to Prime Ministership, one of many that's put in the way, this time by uh, some of my um, colleagues. Let's, let's put it that way. Your feeling was he shouldn't have called his bill? Oh, no. My, well, only because I thought they wanted it. Mm, mm, so, you know, mm. anything that they want, mm. my, my natural reaction would be, don't let it happen. Yeah. But he, he just felt the damage to the party was, um, was too great. <laughs> Look, obviously Carol's feeling it like me, and uh, she is disappointed that the challenge is on. That's a natural reaction. All I say to you, what we've got to have is not a popularity contest, we've got to have a policy contest. If you really look at how because he's been criticised, there's not a lot about his capacity. It's resorting to, he has, doesn't have any charisma. Well, can you tell me who's got a lot of charisma on either side of the political parties today? So Mr Crane, will you win on Monday? Yes, I will. It's just not part of the deal to be terribly exciting. Training? No. No, the adrenaline keeps you going. The difficulty is that television can present you in a completely different way than you actually are in real life. It is difficult because I'm assertive, I'm forceful, I want to make my point. Sometimes that comes across as angry, no humour. But, you know, when you're really trying to pursue a cause, you don't achieve it by telling jokes. <laughs> you achieve it by actually developing a strategy and prosecuting it. It's almost as if the old days of the town hall meetings or the personal contact, the smaller electorates, probably would have suited me better. Simon Crean's front bench support is shrinking. Wayne Swan and Stephen Smith say only a switch back to Kim Beasley will give Labor a chance of defeating John Howard. We want to see the big bloke back, we want to see the big fella back. Everywhere I go, people say, bring back Kim. He's our best shot. Bob Hawke likes to back a winner, and in the Labor leadership race, his bet's on Kim Beasley. Kim Beasley has a better chance of getting the Labor message across. What do you think of Hawke stepping in and taking sides over the ALP leadership challenge? Well, Bob's entitled to his view. <laughs> and he expressed it to me on Friday and uh, we had a talk about it. We're mates, we go back a long time. I'm disappointed that he's gone public with it, but he has. 
it's not going to influence the outcome on Monday. I'm very confident of my support. Well, I've got the Yorkshire pudding. The girls always demand that. <laughs> no point having roast beef without Yorkshire pudding, so... I find it relaxing because it takes your mind off things. I mean, you work so hard and you put so much of your heart into it and then you just get slapped back in the face. And that sort of... I don't like that part of it. And I just think it's a really dodgy, dodgy game, politics. It is a game. And there's... Oh, you can it's make and break the rules and... It's not a game. It's partly a game, but it's also a very serious situation. We have two daughters, Sarah and Emma, 20 and 18. No, it's not. One's doing her last year at school and the other's second year at university. Especially because of his position now, I hardly ever see him. But it does make the times that I do see him a lot worthwhile. And it's better because you appreciate it a lot more. So we have a, a different father-daughter relationship than most other people. We don't fight it. We still fight. <laughs> we still have our fights. I know that. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Our daughters don't want the angst, I think, of being involved in the spotlight. Okay. I think they're sort of withdrawing a little bit more than they would before. Okay. All right, here we go. A lot of stuff gets written in the papers and a lot of stuff gets said that I know for a fact aren't true. And it really annoys me when I can't express that in my own way and I don't really have any power to sort of counter-argument any of all the stuff that's in, published in the media. So that annoys me and I do take things personally. Yeah. Perfect for you. Anyone want mustard? Yeah. 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 So yeah, they'll deal with it in their own way and try and not, not let it affect their lives too much. But I think that's how they've reacted. Hi. All right, see you good later. Luck, good luck. Mm. You'll be fine. Thanks for that. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nerve-wracking. I'm going up, you know, so I'll, I'll be um, oh, yeah. thinking about what's happening. And then just hope there's plenty of smiles at, when, they, when they come out of the caucus room. He's always positive. He's always positive with me as well. Good evening. So, you know, it's going to be okay, Kaz, is a very common phrase I hear. All right. Five minutes to midnight. I suppose what I'll be writing in my column tomorrow is, uh, is maybe paraphrasing Churchill, but uh, this isn't the end. This isn't even the beginning of the end. It's done damage to Crean, it's done damage to Beasley, it's done damage to Latham, it's done damage to Smith, it's done damage to Swan. Who hasn't it done damage to? I, I don't know. Um, any Labor MP with a marginal seat would be, uh, won't be celebrated. See you later. Two seconds. Just missing. Oh, I know. Oh. You'll be here when he comes back. Yeah, he'll be fine. I'm sure he's got more things than me on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so where are they counting? In this room? In the next yeah. room? Boardroom? Okay. Yeah, so. Caucus finds out first. Yeah. Um, and then they'll come, I'm sure he'll come straight yeah. out here to tell them. To tell them. And then the loser goes first, press conference wise. And then we go. Oh, okay. So it's obviously all been done before, so I've been reading on my way here. <laughs> It's going to be fine. Isn't that what he said? It'll be fine, Kaz? Yeah, it'll be fine, Kaz. <laughs> Good morning. Here we go. Hey, uh -oh. Simon Cream has been re-elected leader of the Labor Party with 58 votes. Kim Beasley on 34. Mr Beasley spoke first and gave a generous speech of concession. No, that's not your husband. No, no, no. <laughs> very proud, very relieved. Hi, Jenny. Thank you very much. Well, this is the start of the day to... the renewed start of the day to defeat John Howard at the next election. Uh, my Come in. Come biggest in. relief will be later on tonight, though, <laughs> when it's all What's sort of What's the biggest finished. relief? 
when Australian Story's been aired. <laughs> <laughs> My star sign said today, um, you may have said something recently that you wished you hadn't. <laughs> no. All right, excellent. Okay, thank you very much. And let's turn those cameras off. <laughs> Skittles. Down. No. Down. Yeah, I know. You want to get fit too. We had a gutsy win at tennis because we were the underdogs and won that the final. Yeah, well I've got three of them. Three girls. Geminis. And when they decide to stack up against you, it's like having six instead of three. <laughs>